On October 29, 1969, the world's first internet message was sent between two computers in California. It consisted of the letter L followed by O. Then the system crashed. Just over 40 years later, there are more than 2 billion people connected to the internet. The scale, the breadth of the activity is mind-blowing. We're all plugged into the big fat information pipe now. We can contact a, a massive library. Information is on tap. They're a side issue of salad, you know, and they're in the restaurants, everyone has their mobiles. Uh, you only have to see people incessantly uh, using their thumbs while they're talking to someone else. You only have to see people with those white wires in their heads, not communicating or connecting with the outside world, let alone each other. The virtual revolution is transforming the way we shop, manage our health, entertain ourselves, and even how we make friends. Websites like Facebook and Twitter and, and YouTube really allow people to seek attention for themselves. I can do things we can never do in the physical world. The rules, the physics of how social interactions work get completely changed. I think the question of the impact of technology on young brains is as broad a question as that, let's say, of climate change. It's unprecedented, it's highly controversial, some people think we're doomed. Whatever you think of digital technology, one thing's certain, there's no going back. Digital technology is now so pervasive that there's an app that shows me what's in front of my phone so I don't run into things. If I lose connection, I feel anxious and thirsty for information. So if I'm feeling so ill at ease without it, what's all this constant stimulation actually doing to my brain? If you practice juggling for a week, then your brain is going to change. Now imagine for the past 10 years you have been sitting at your computer a few hours a day and using internet. Of course it has changed you. There is no way that it shouldn't. We're on Mac 5. I'm on Mac 10. Oh, do the pink. I wonder what's the pink. What do those colours do? It's icing. Ah. Oh. At first, it seems like good news. There's evidence our visual IQ is going up. Our on-screen environments are becoming so sophisticated, they're improving our spatial visualisation and orientation skills. To keep track of what's happening, viewers are becoming experts at dividing their attention. But that's key to the problem. A growing body of evidence is suggesting information overload is turning us into scattered thinkers. Rather like fast food is not good for us, so too fast information is, is not good for us either because we don't digest, uh, we don't spend any time on it, we just consume it. Professor David Nicholas, Director of Cyber Research and a former lecturer of the University College of London, has been studying the way we process information on the internet. Whatever it is you do in a digital form, you leave a trace. We call it a digital footprint. So we have this marvellous, huge database, database of millions and millions of people. So for the very first time ever, we actually know how people behave in terms of information seeking. This was the huge shock. Nobody seems to dwell for any period of time anywhere. But what people seem to be doing is just skipping the surface, skittering. They spend seconds, minutes on something, and then they're off to something else. Digital natives, users born after 1993, are less focused or engaged with each site. But is that a concern? Your brain is not there to give you education. Your brain is part of an, a biological organism that tries to maximize uh, things such as, for example, how easily you can get on with life without having to spend much energy, much, much, much time or, or, or much effort. And if this maximizes your, your, your gain without putting much effort in it, your brain is of course going to do this. This is, this is very, very rational. If you Take your child away from internet and just tell them you have to go to the encyclopedia in paper and find the answer, write it down in your notebook and take it to your teacher. Yes, she will be able to focus greatly, but 20 years from now, that is not what's going to get her in front of everybody else.
because everybody else does that in a second. When set to a specific research task, older and younger users displayed startling differences in the way they gather information. Older Gen X users took an average of three and a half minutes to find the answer on the internet, while digital natives took about 30 seconds. One would assume that's because the younger generation are better at using the technology. But that's not the whole story. They just want to find things quickly, go past the finishing post and say, hey, you know, hey you guys, I found it. But what they found isn't very good. Their behaviour lacks evaluation. They choose the first ones up on Google because that is fast. Whereas the older people were spending much more time, they were comparing sites, and in fact, their answers were more correct than the young person's. The Google generation grabbed the words that we'd given them, cut and pasted it, and stuck it into the search engine, and then they got the answer. But universities are still behaving in many ways in a Victorian way. We put them in an exam hall for three hours. They're not allowed to use computer. They have to use their hands to write. None of them have ever written that long. What we get is illegible, is not very well researched. We give low marks and the whole system is dysfunctional. It doesn't work. We live in a parallel universe. If you think of skimming research books in the same way, it's easy to see how flitting from one page to the next goes against deeper learning. You know, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. You know, always, always you have a sequence, it's not random. And I think that if you're, again, engaged in activities where you are doing things in parallel, where you're hypertexting, where you're not following a linear cause and effect sequence, that might have a very profound effect on your actual thinking powers. The idea that multitasking information leads to a decline in our thinking powers is backed by other studies. People who are constantly interrupted by emails and calls have been shown to be less creative and productive than those who do one thing at a time. Text cluttered with links is less easily absorbed than printed material. Digital banners prevent viewers from absorbing as much of a news broadcast as they would with an uninterrupted screen. And students who browse the internet during class remember less of the lecture than those that keep their laptop closed. We're constantly being bombarded by stimuli, by emails, by Twitters, and, and all we go into is responsive mode. With all this unprecedented access to information from television, the internet and telecommunications, many of us no longer give ourselves the gift of switching off. It's in these moments where we can reflect and process what we've learnt into a deeper, more mindful knowledge. Without those moments, we may simply become more shallow.